And welcome to the GEICO 15 Minutes or Less Coaches Show with the head coach, Doug Wojcik. As always, brought to you each and every week by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO, or you can visit them online at GEICO.com. And we welcome you down to the courts alongside the head coach, Doug Wojcik. I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for tuning in this week here on CFCSports.com. It is the Monday after the Super Bowl. Did you get a chance to watch the game last night for a little bit? We did, yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't too too entertaining. But no. uh, Leo's from Seattle. My wife is from Seattle. So the whole house was decorated in uh, green and, and blue. And uh, we got a kind of a crazy picture with uh, I had a blue wig on and she had a green wig on. and. Uh, we had some friends over, but uh, she's happy. Uh, I just, I'd like to see a better game, but, uh, but we had a good time. Wigs, Kyle, can we get a picture of that? We got to start tweeting that out. All right, let's get to uh, some basketball. You guys coming off a nice win here at home against Hofstra. Good bounce back win after a tough week against James Madison and, and William and Mary. Good crowd, I thought, on, on Saturday for homecoming. Yeah, it was a great crowd, uh, and it should be. It's homecoming. So they, they came out. We had the Hall of Fame induction, and uh, uh, I thought our fans really responded, and I thought we responded to the fans. Cedric Weber was part of the homecoming uh, festivities. We saw him honored at half court. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and uh, you and I talked about it on the radio broadcast. He'd be a great player to have come back and play again. He still looks like he's in great shape too. Yeah, he's he's you know kind of your prototypical uh, big wing that that we're running into in the league. He's kind of like Upshaw's size from uh, Hofstra. Could score it inside. Could score it outside. He still plays with our guys in the summer. He's still. He's still getting after it, uh, you know. I, I'm trying to advise him. You know, I've had an assistant rupture an Achilles and an assistant rupture a patella tendon, telling right. him to maybe slow it down a little bit. But he's a he's a basketball junkie, and I really believe that in that era, uh, in that in that late '90s era, that's what they had here. They had a bunch of basketball junkies: Anthony Johnson, Cedric, uh, you know, all those guys that played during that era. They they were really kind of held themselves accountable, and that's why they had the success that they did. Oh, really special moment again with Cedric Weber at, uh, at center court here at halftime to honor him. And, you know, that whole day, really, really good energy in the building, and, and the student section was here. And you mentioned during the radio pregame show, you know, here at the College of Charleston, obviously no football, so our homecoming has to come during basketball season. That's something that, uh, that you haven't experienced a lot in your career. Yeah, I, I've actually been, every school I've been at has been a football school. Right. So, uh, um, you know, it is kind of a, an advantage for us in a sense that uh, yeah. you know you 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 go through the basketball season in, in your marketing department or whoever you're you you have 15 dates 16 dates I mean you're trying to find something for for every date to, to kind of bring people together and and it's it's really difficult in in November and December but for you to have a homecoming in February is a really nice thing because you know, down here, the weather is probably at the worst stage of the year, and it's a reason for people to come to town and really come to a game. So it's, uh, it gives us a, a little bit of a reason to have more people come out and certainly to honor your former athletes, not just basketball players, but the Hall of Fame is a nice way to, nice touch to the whole homecoming thing. Coach, let's talk about the game. You guys win it 67 to 49, a very big win. You and I talked about this during the pre and post game show, get you back to the 500 mark in conference play at four and four and right back up there in the standings. So good win. Yeah, right now we're in fourth. So, uh, you know, if uh, Northeastern has a tough game tonight, if they, they lose, then uh, we're, we're in fourth place by ourselves. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of parity. I mean, UNC Wilmington almost beat Delaware the other day, and yet uh, I watched that game. And then you watch, uh, boy, you watch Delaware against William & Mary, which was just last Wednesday, and you, you'd think they were the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, I mean, they got – in my opinion, they've got three first-team All-League players. Uh, the kid that gets no credit is the kid Baptiste. He's really, really good, and he's as good as Scott Etherton or Etherton from uh, Northeastern in the in the post. But uh, yeah, we're we're fighting and clawing and scratching and doing what we have to do to be good. Great game for you guys. Shot the ball very well. 12 of 24 in the win against Hofstra. 12 three-pointers. So 12 of 24 again. Willis Hall had four. Uh, Nori Johnson again with four three-pointers. Anthony Stitt a really good game. You guys shot the ball really well. Well, Hofstra, you know, they kind of, you know, their, their defense, they kind of junk it up. They've shown like a 1-3-1 one, one, and then a 2-3, but it's all sort of a matchup defense. And, uh, you know, for two games really against them, we've really attacked it well. Uh, score 71 at their place and score 67 here. Uh, a little frustrating for me in the sense that you can make 12 three-pointers and not score 70 points. <laughs> 
but uh, but hey, that's a that's another story for another day. But uh, uh, you know, good win for us. Really defended them much better this time than the last time. And you know, hopefully you make those adjustments the second time you see everybody. You know, looking back over the year and you see it as as we head to Delaware this week and then turn around and come back and then head to Towson on Saturday because it's a Wednesday Saturday swing and we can't afford to miss that much school. When you look at that, boy, there's there's a there's a lot of uh, unknowns. There's a lot of uh, you know how the travel is going to be, and and just you look at it and you don't know the teams. You see them on tape, and one game they look great, and one game they don't look as good, and you know it's it's just it's just one of those trying years, you know, in the sense that everything's new to us. Well, again, you guys shot the ball very well. Twelve three pointers in that victory over Hofstra. Again, the guys now twelve and eleven overall, four and four in conference play. One thing too, uh, you and I talked about. I wanted to hit on the defense. Uh, they jumped out to a seven nothing lead. I looked at us. I, I was trying to come up with a stat when you and I talked in the locker room afterwards, and here it was. So at the sixteen fifty five mark of that first half, Hofstra led seven to nothing. If you go all the way down to seven minutes and fifty two seconds left in the game. Hofstra only had 28 points. You guys held them to just 21 points, basically over about a 30-minute stretch. The defense really locked them down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it certainly wasn't the way you want to start a game. Um, right. You know, I've been at two schools now as a head coach, and the tradition of both schools is to stand until you score. And I'm not sure I like that tradition. <laughs> they were standing for a while. They were standing for a while. <laughs> and uh, once you go back and watch the tape and watch it, like, they were standing for a while. Um, so... Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, they really tightened it up and, um, you know, Anthony Thomas did a great job on Upshaw um, and Anthony Stitt did a great job on Nesmith. And um, you just that's that's the crazy thing about sports, the crazy thing about games. I mean, who would predict that that would be the start and that would be the finish? Who would predict that that's the way the Denver Broncos were going to play last night versus the Seattle Seahawks? I mean, those guys are grown men. They're adults. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, it, it's just that's what sports is. And I think that's what makes people come, keep coming back to sports is, you know, you turn sports on on TV and and um, it, it's not a reality TV show. It's 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 real and sometimes good, sometimes bad. And so uh, I think that's why sports is just so prevalent in our society is because it's unpredictable and um, it's entertaining just because of the you know because it is unpredictable Again, a good win for the guys 67 to 49 over Hofstra we'll take a break when we come back we will look at the most recent CAA standings we'll also talk about some of the new recruits coming in next year and a lot to talk about when we come back also the big trip the coach was just talking about up to Delaware and Towson so a big big week ahead as well so the second half comes your way next you're listening to the 15 minutes or less Geico podcast here on cfcsports.com Geico says, let's make life simpler. Look, I'm all for modern conveniences. But ask yourself, do you really need a blender with 23 buttons just to chop an onion? At Geico, we think life should be simpler. So we make it super simple to save on car insurance. Just one click and you could be on your way to saving hundreds. Come on, people. Life doesn't have to be that complicated. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And welcome back inside TD Arena for the Geico 15 Minutes or Less podcast with the head coach, Doug Wojcik. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get right to the standings, coach. Big win for you guys again against Hofstra. And here are the standings. Delaware in first place at 8-0. Towson at 5-2. William & Mary 5-3. CFC Northeastern now tied at 4-4. Four and, four. and there you see the rest with Drexel, James Madison, Hofstra, and UNC Wilmington. So you guys right now, we talk about parity in the league. Delaware, as we talked about in the radio show, has separated themselves, but uh, right there, you guys, right there in the standings, a lot of parity after that. Yeah, it's pretty impressive with Delaware. I mean, uh, the, the their point guard who averages 17 points a game, he's suspended right now, um, and yet they are really kind of rolling through the league, even though you talk about their close loss to Wilmington. And Wilmington's going to beat somebody along the way. They're not a they're, they're they're a better team than their record, and and uh, it says a lot about Delaware. They're rolling. They're, they, they've got more offense than anybody in the league. Uh, and then after that, I mean, Towson's an older team. They're supposed to be there, and they've got the player of the year. So uh, from that point on, I mean, um, um, you know, it's, there's just a ton of parity, and there'll, there'll be parity throughout the year. So, you know, trying to win, win your next game and, 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 and win tiebreaker games is really important. So this week you have a chance to, to play against the number one team in the league and the number two team in the league, which are tiebreaker games for us. Yeah, it'll be a good road trip coming up uh, against Delaware and Towson. We'll talk about them here in just a minute. Uh, first, Coach, I want to take some time here real quick. Uh, throughout the, the week, obviously, we always get questions. And, and a big question I get from time to time is, who's coming in next year? Who do you got coming in? And we haven't talked about it in a while. So let's let's hit the three guys who you signed who are coming in next uh, next year. I guess let's just start with Evan Bailey. He's uh, quite a shooter out of Ohio. 
195 pounds. I've seen some video on him. He can really shoot it. Yeah, it's just funny. Let me make a comment. Everyone wants to talk about who's coming in, and we really have one freshman playing this year. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really about getting older and stronger, and it's really about the, the freshmen becoming sophomores, in my opinion. Uh, not to take away from any freshman coming in. Uh, I know people want, always want to talk about the new guys. I want to right. talk about the guys who are coming back. But uh, Evan Bailey's going to be a really good player. A uh, good size wing player, which you know, as we've gone through the conference, you, you need big, big wings to defend. Um, and uh, he's going to be a really good all-around basketball player. Uh, probably very similar to, uh, or you know, uh, you know, uh, probably the Walker kid from from Northeastern. He'll be that type of a player. Right. Um, and then, of course, uh, Donovan Gilmore. He's just a really good athlete. He'll be a little bit of a jack of all trades. Uh, go between the three and the four for us, uh, allow us to maybe replace the size of an Anthony Thomas, although not, not going to be that skilled on the perimeter that, that early on. And then, of course, I think Nick Harris is going to be a really good low post presence for us. I mean, right now, one of the things we, you know, don't, don't do well is we when we throw it in the post we don't we don't we don't score it real well down in the post and that's you know so I think Nick as the future go, unfolds I think he'll be a guy that you can throw to down in the low post and, and really get something out of you know a bucket of fouls two made free throws good passer again he's going to be a freshman so I, I don't want to put too much pressure on any of them but uh, they all have they all fit there's a piece they're, they're a piece to the puzzle and there's hopefully a method to our recruiting and uh, everyone has a, a, a position uh, or can see where they stand in the program. And um, hopefully we, we do a good job recruiting for, for a reason, not just to recruit. Right. Well, you mentioned Evan Bailey, heck of a shooter. And Donovan Gilmore we had a chance to watch some video on him. I mean, he can just jump out of the gym. He's 6'7", 190 out of High Point. And then Nick Harris, who you mentioned out of Atlanta, good size for you, 6'10", 220 right now. And, you know, that, that kind of brings me to the point to how, how we guys, we watch guys in their journey and we see how these guys mature. Um, you, know, you take, for example, a Nick Harris at 220. He's obviously going to gain a lot of weight when the guys come in. Uh, our strength and conditioning uh, coordinator, Mark Proto, has done a great job with the guys. Canyon Berry, we talked about him during the radio broadcast. He's gone from about 178 or so up to about 200 pounds. He's already yeah. gained a bunch of muscle and strength. Well, I think that's, that's just the way it is. I mean, you're, you're not going to get uh, one and done players at the College of Charleston. It's just not, not going to happen. So. You know, you can go a lot of different routes. You can go uh, the junior college route, which is uh, difficult uh, academically, uh, quite honestly. Uh, those kids are in a tough spot uh, just with two years here. And then you can go tr the traditional way. And I, I like the traditional way in the sense that you have kids for four and five years through the high school route. Well, what that consists of is you, you've got to become older and stronger. And then, of course, you sort of have to maintain your, your program. So hopefully on a given year that you're only losing two or three or maybe four kids in one particular year. And so that the turnover is not six and seven guys in a year because that's really hard. It's really hard to kind of replenish and re replace. And so you want consistency there. And, and part of that is the strength and conditioning program. It's, it's way more important than people ever realize. I mean, Mark Proto has a very, very important job at the college. And I hope people understand that and acknowledge that. He, he uh, basically uh, is, is in charge of 21 sports and uh, with not a whole lot of help. Uh, it's a big area. And if you go to uh, an Ohio State or you go to some of these other schools, I mean, you're, you'd see, you know, six and seven people working in that department right. and uh, two or three weight rooms. So it's, uh, it's a big part of college athletics in, in these days. Coach, got to wrap things up. It's always tough to keep it here under 15 minutes, but a uh, big road trip coming up at Delaware, at Towson, a chance to see these guys for the first time. And, and this can be a tricky week for all, the, for all the guys. And you and I talk about this, how they have to constantly balance uh, school with travel and, and having the games on Wednesday and Saturday this week obviously will be a challenge for them. Yeah, with two on a road, I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, – and, and then with last week's, week's missed class because of the weather here, uh, puts a little bit of a demand on our kids, but I do want to mention the autism um, yeah. um, pin. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Scary at Towson asked us to wear it as, as as far as awareness towards autism, and I certainly wanted to do that and at least mention it on the podcast today because I don't think it got mentioned on Saturday as much like the Cancer Awareness Weekend. But uh, we certainly want to show our support for that cause. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Uh, I think there were over 80 coaches across the country on Saturday for Autism Awareness Day who were wearing those. It was really neat to see that in a lot of the interviews all the coaches are wearing a little puzzle piece. Yeah, pretty impressive when you see uh, Mike Krzyzewski 
uh, in his press conference after a game like yeah. Syracuse. I mean, now he had a whole, he had like ribbons, like he was an admiral in the, in the Navy, but uh, he, had, he had his on, and that's, that's nice to see uh, uh, because obviously it's, it's, it's just as important as cancer. Yeah, great cause, and it's great to know the way that college basketball is helping uh, different causes in the community. Yeah, I mean, I think it's our, it's our, you know, it's our fraternity, and, and uh, you know, I'm always going to stick with coaches. I'm a coach, and, uh, uh, you know, win or lose, I mean, it's hard for everybody, and so somebody has to lose and somebody has to win, and so you have to keep your head above the water and, uh, you know, win, win with grace and lose with grace, and uh, so I'm certainly going to support those other coaches that have different causes out there. That'll wrap things up here for the Geico 15 Minutes or Less podcast. Good luck this week on the road. We'll talk to you Thanks. on Wednesday at Delaware. Appreciate it. That's head coach Doug Wojcik. I'm Jeff McCarriger. We will talk to you again next week right here on cfcsports.com.